look back first to the St. John's game, especially that first half. Have you ever been involved in a game where you controlled the ball for 22 minutes of possession time and pretty much limited the St. John's to minimal possessions? Have you ever been involved in a game like that? Jeez, it's probably been a few and far between. I mean, you know, obviously that's a goal of ours each and every week, just the style of offense that we have. You know, we, we our goal each and every week is to get 34 minutes of ball control and We've been fortunate this year that we've reached that goal in all three games, and we've gotten you know better every week with that. But you know, you really never plan for a 40-minute, 10-second uh, uh, time of possession. Uh, you know, that's the second time in what 30 years, and both times actually been down at Collegeville. So um, I was proud of our kids. We really executed well. I thought we were really solid on third down conversions, and our first down plays were very efficient as well. So. Uh, and Griffin uh, just did a nice job at engineering things. I mean, there were a few times where we were, we had a couple fourth down plays, and, and in most years, you know, I'd, I'd probably be conservative and punt, but when you've got a quarterback like Griffin and how he just finds ways of making plays, um, those were pretty easy decisions for us. One of the key points of the game, too, is that, you know, a team like St. John's, you're not going to be able to hold them down for long. No. They came back in there you know, within a couple of points, and then you went on that long drive to kind of put the game out of reach to get it to 23 points. Did you say anything to the team or make any adjustments before then to kind of get them pumped up and say, listen, this is a swing point of the game? You know, our kids at halftime, we, you know, it was 16 nothing. They they made a little bit of a push right at the end of the first half and, and actually dropped a touchdown pass and kept us up at 16 nothing. We said, you know, this is this thing is far from over. They're going to get the ball to start the second half. We need a good start. Well, they methodically move down the field and score, and then we get the ball back at 16 to 7, and we go down the field. And we kind of stubbed our own toe, you know. We dropped a third down pass right at the sticks to keep the chains moving, and then we came out and we missed a 36-yard field goal. And that doesn't always happen, you know, with Benny Wagner. And and so then they get the ball back, they go down, and score again. Now it's 16-14, and you know I just went into the huddle and I didn't have to say a whole lot. Our kids were pretty focused, but I just said, you know what, let's go. This is this is this is a big try for us. We need to get back into this, so it wasn't anything magical or anything. Our kids have been executing all day, and St. John's really hadn't stopped us, so let's just go back to work and focus on what we need to do and do your job. And then that drive, which is about a 15-play drive, took about eight minutes off the board. You know, there were several key third-down conversions um, that were very helpful for us, and then also a big couple big fourth-down plays. So, you know, putting us up uh, two scores with eight minutes to go in the game, you know, it was far from over, but we were we were feeling pretty good about that. That was the key drive of the game. And then, I mean, not to be forgotten in this whole thing, the defense played awfully well as well. So. Came up with a couple of turnovers, one key late. And then also talk a little bit about the defensive line, how they were able to pressure St. John's, get into their backfield, made a, several key tackles for a loss, and you get uh, Nate Adams being named the MIC Defensive Player of the Week. Right, yeah, you know what? When an offense has 40 minutes of ball control, the defense... Uh, you know, usually, you know, doesn't get to notice as much, but uh, they were every bit as important in that whole deal as anybody. I mean, they had a couple three and outs in that first half when St. John's did get the ball. They didn't give them a sniff. They gave us the ball right back, and we did our thing. Um, but they had a great, uh, great day as well, and especially late when they caused the two turnovers. Our D line just constantly continues to keep getting better. We had good pressure all day. Nate gets the you know the the player of the week award and and uh, but it was a collective uh, team effort and, and those 11 guys on the black shirts uh, they certainly uh, deserve a lot of credit now let's look for, jump forward to this week you're playing St. Olaf you know they haven't won a game yet this year uh, obviously it's a cliche but this could be a trap game because you're coming off a big win at St. John's now you might be looking forward to a big game at Bethel next week how do you keep the players how do you keep the players focused uh, this week. Well, I think uh, you know. I think our young men know where they want to be, and uh, it doesn't matter who you play in our league. Our, our league is as tough as uh, as there is in all of Division Three. I don't care if you're 0 three or three and zero. Like the scenario we have this weekend, you're always going to be tested, and 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 we know Saint Olaf is going to be ready to play. They have they have several key players that um, can make things happen for them, and I know they're hungry for a W. And when you're hungry for a win, you're you know you're about ready to do anything and, and, and for us you know we want to keep taking the strides forward and to continue to get better 
Um, we're not where we want to be yet, but uh, we've made strides every week, and, and, and St. Olaf is our next opponent. It's not Bethel, it's not St. Thomas, it's not Augsburg, uh, it's St. Olaf, and that's our focus. And one of the key players for St. Olaf on offense, their quarterback, Nate Penns, you know, he was all-conference last year, does a great job, I know, with the offense this year. What does he bring to the table for that? Well, he certainly he gets rid of the football pretty quick, so you know, there hasn't been a whole lot of teams that have been able to pressure him because, I mean, it's, it's get the ball one, two, and the ball is out, and he's got a good receiving core. And that Reinhardt boy had, uh, what, he had 19 catches in one game, broke a school record, and I think he leads the league with like 25 receptions and so they got capable players and, and the Penn's name has been around MIC for the last several years and he's just a good athlete and makes things happen he makes that offense go. Finally, uh, you know, sometimes it wasn't as hyped as last year, but this game, rivalry game, it's the left's a bull, and you're playing for that troll. Yeah. <laughs> what does it mean to get that troll again? Well, that troll's sitting in a pretty nice <laughs> spot, and I certainly want it to stay there. You know, after the game at St. John's, we were, everyone was so excited, and I said, you know, that we'll, we can enjoy this one for 24 hours, and we're back to work tomorrow and getting ready for the the ugliest traveling trophy in the country, bar none. And uh, they all started laughing. I said, and it's in a pretty good spot, and we want to keep it there. So our kids take a lot of pride in the troll, as does St. Olaf, and it'll be, uh, it'll be out front and center on Saturday, and, and we hope it stays in our hands. Good luck. Thank you.